All right, hi everyone, this is Greg with my cap, if I may say, of Greg's Gin Guide. Yeah, now uh, I will speak about gin only. No, that's not true. Plus, if you are, you have a good eye, you can notice maybe that there are also whiskey bottles on the table while, while everything is white, transparent rather, on the table uh, regarding uh, the glasses. So yes, it's about gin, but this time not only gin. Okay, so uh, you know that I'm a whiskey fan, but I guess some of you still don't know I'm a gin fan as well, and I started tasting gin and, and Genièvre which will come to that shortly as well, the ancestor of gin, way before I drank uh, whiskey, way I, I, before I discovered whiskey. So I started my journey uh, discovering other spirits than whiskey and got to whiskey later on, around maybe 25 years ago. But something around 30 years ago, I was more into unaged spirits. So. Not going to be long on that, but all in all, let's say I discovered uh, gin before whiskey. And over the years, but mainly those last three, four years, I would say I got interested into gin and uh, even more lately because there's a gin boom in many, many countries now. I will come back to that as well. But while I was gathering with that, my own money, I had to say that uh, all these bottles of gin and now I have 23 different gins in my collection from 20 different distilleries uh, and six countries or areas of productions. So uh, I wanted to speak to you about gin but I didn't know how I would start that and how I would cut into those bottles to present them to you uh, four or five by five or four by four. Today we are going to try five different gins. So I found a practical manner to do that at least for the two first videos. This will be also interesting because this is linked to whiskey, whiskey industry in particular. Uh, and today we're gonna see whiskey industry about uh, one, two, three countries, uh, different countries. Uh, next time we're gonna be mainly talking about Scotch, Scotland, I mean, sorry, you see, <laughs> Scotland and a bit of England. In fact, for those who have a good eye, sorry about my bad camera, but the next bottles we're going to speak about are behind me. So uh, Isle of Harris, Cotswolds Dry Gin, The Botanist from Brooklady. There's one I cannot find, I couldn't find to do a picture presentation, so I'm not sure I'm going to put it in. But we'll see, this is another thing. And we will finish by the uh, famous Tancray, which is that green and uh, you cannot see from now a bottle. But today we're going to go by five different whiskies and five different distilleries. And I thought it was interesting to uh, link that to whiskey as well. Um, because the, th the sub theme, the main gin uh, theme is gin. So if you had some noise in the background, there's some works I didn't plan on other places around. Uh, so gin, but whiskey distilleries making gins. Or the sub theme, not today, but uh, some other uh, days will also be uh, distilleries making gins, but planning to do whiskey soon. Um, and uh, just as a sub introduction, uh, today we're going to speak about Scottish, we, uh, Scottish gins, Irish gin, and Japanese gin. But like I said, there's a boom about gin uh, in many places. I went to uh, the Irish embassy, for instance, and discovered a lot of new gins, very interesting from craft, new craft distillery, boutique distilleries, etc. I will come back to it uh, at some point. Uh, Japanese, there's a Japanese boom uh, as well of, of gin. 
Uh, there's one gene I'm going to probably speak uh, b in my third or fourth video. So if you wonder why it's not there, it's because as far as I know, they do not produce whiskey. But of course, the Kyoto distillery is making this beautiful gene. I'm going to review as well uh, soon. Now, uh, if you follow the channel, I did a, uh, my latest video was about uh, a tribute to French uh, spirit industry uh, in collaboration with uh, famous uh, Instagrammers or YouTubers uh, in France. Um, and uh, so I picked for the French, uh, the French Spirits Day, I picked uh, one gin, one um, whiskey and one Armagnac and the gin I'm not going to present you today because uh, or during the following weeks maybe uh, uh, as a summary at the end because it's one of my favorite now a craft gin from Paris uh, from France which is called uh, London Dry Gin by l'alambic parisien l'alambic means steel uh, this i spoke about in french and in english in my previous video so i probably put a link below talking about french gin uh, there's also and it's interesting i'm anticipating because i'm going to give you a bit of history of gin but gin is mainly made after grain um, it is not often made after distilled wine but in france you can find this Gévin Floraison, uh, uh, a gin which is made after uh, uh, distilled wine. So we're going to speak about that also. We got also this Citadel gin made by Maison Ferrand, who does also cognac, um, cognac yeah, uh, and rums and a lot of things. So yeah, just to let you know that there are other things coming in, uh, and uh, but for now. Bear with me, I'm going to give you just a brief piece of history about gin because I am not a gin specialist uh, and there are a lot of channels about gin. Even if I regret that mo most of these channels are more about mixology, uh, mixing gin than uh, tasting gin and studying real gin, but they still are some nice ones. For this video I'm gonna relate on a website that's very good to give you uh, gin recipes I mean how the gin is made uh, which are the components which often you cannot find you cannot find online on the official websites of the uh, of the gin producers because most of the time they give you the main ingredients they don't give you all the ingredients so I tried for these four videos to find for you all the ingredients sometimes i failed sometimes i managed to uh, find them so we'll rely on the genies in that com website link in description and on dave broom's gin how to drink it that i really uh, recently discovered and currently studying uh yeah octopus box uh it's uh, published on uh what was the name uh, mitchell beasley the name of the publisher uh so yeah lots of interesting things in there uh the history of gin the the steels that are used so we have pot and column and also some original ones you can see also he like for the manual he mixes uh, or drinks it in two different cocktails and uh, with lemonade a Sicilian lemonade and on GNT for each one so you can uh, have his opinion there also of course you can have uh, you can have also uh, cocktail recipes at the end but of course you can have the uh, original uh, the origins of gin and we will get that where is it uh, in a minute with Ge uh, Dutch Geneva right so highly recommended one. I'm going to see if I have time to read a few lines about it. So also relying on other sources, like I said in the French and English video about the, the 
Paris, the French gene. Uh, history of gene dates from very far in time, uh, not as a contemporary London dry gin, of course, or dry gin or flavored gin, but flavored gin will not be uh, reviewed before the third or fourth video because uh, the main gin I have are dry gin or uh, special genes from different countries. Um, but what can I say? It did. It goes back to a lot of time where it was, of course, uh, juniper berries were used, uh, infused, uh, and uh, mixed sometimes to other things. So we'll see that. So the origins are uh, Egyptian, uh, Roman, uh, back to um, AD 40 to 90. Then also, uh, it, this is recorded as uh, um, something that's very good to cure <laughs> flatulency, sudden chills, stop coughs, and brings induration to a head. Blah blah blah. Uh, the seed is diuretic in effects, either as four berries in white wine. So it was mixed in wine with other berries. Now, in medieval times, it started to resemble more to contemporary Geneviève and not dry gin but some kind of flavored gin um, so lots of history in there I'm not gonna go into this because we have a lot of tasting but all in all gin was initially uh, invented if I may say as a contemporary drink let's say in Netherlands uh, by uh, and one of the first record of a gin recipe uh, was from Philip Duff a big specialist of gin uh, which is juniper spirit juniper eau de vie um, so it was named Geneva in 17th century in Netherlands and uh, it was also present around that time maybe later on in north of france as called genevre which is the, the translation of Geneva. so it was just juniper berries distilled and nothing else now in netherlands i'm not sure if there was something else added but it was the main component so uh, as i understand it in the 18th century uh, Geneva becomes popular uh, some said it was the gin craze and with uh, the troops and the army uh, helping uh, the uh, King Guillaume d'Orange to, to, uh, to get access to, uh, to the Britannic throne in 1688, gin was conquering England basically. So lighter as the Geneva, the gin was most often made uh, only uh, after neutral alcohol, grain neutral alcohol. Uh, even the, po the government did encourage that at some point. It was uh, uh, very popular uh, among workers. But then, uh, of course, alcohol abuse occurred, uh, unfortunately, and they had to um, to do some laws about that, regulate that. So it was at, at the time almost a ban. Uh, there was a gin act also. And in uh, 1751, only uh, the uh, bartenders that had a lot of taxes were allowed to sell gin. Right, long story. Uh, in 19th century, the gin is uh, recovers some respectability and um, the uh, people sailing over the world in, in the uh, Brittany army or Brittany boats uh, they invent the gin tonic so it was a pleasant way to uh, have kinin because uh, in, in tonic there is kinin and this help uh, to fight against malaria so Often those drinks, even whiskey, mind you, were invented to, uh, to be used as a drug, as a medicine. Uh, but of course, uh, as always, uh, I don't encourage, encourage alcohol abuse. So uh, 
So yeah, lots of story. The gin, uh, London dry gin dates back. Uh, doesn't mean it was made in London, but it, it means it's redistillating neutral alcohol with Geneva, uh, juni uh, juniper uh, berries and other natural uh, botanicals and uh, spices and products. So in London dry gin, you cannot add uh, any artificial or colorant. Uh, you are allowed to add sugar, but maximum uh, 0 0.1 uh, grams per liter. Uh, in other sources, I saw 0 0.5, so I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, bear in mind that for rum, it's often up to 20 uh, grams, so it's insane. Um, so it's a style london dry gin it's a style now uh, i talked about a way of consuming it personally i consume it neat sometimes with uh, drops of water or on ice but uh, the most commonly way of consuming gin i guess is london is uh, sorry gnt so gin and tonic here is uh, here is a, a gift box with some Tanqueray. We're going to speak about Tanqueray next time. But what was interesting in there, aside from the glass they offered in the box, which is amazing big glass. Why big? Because uh, you have to put gin in there, but also a lot of ice. And then add your tonic. So uh, here are two recipes you can see which is the most classic uh, ones. So gin and tonic version, tangerine and tonic. So you see four centiliters of London dry gin, nine centiliters of tonic, uh, a bit of lime zest, or uh, just a squeeze of lime, I guess, and some ice. So you see it's pretty easy. There's a nice variant here, I haven't tried it, but I'm very excited about, is the, the, the basil smash. It's using uh, some uh, basil leaves. I think this could be amazing. Like for rum amateurs, the uh, I believe the um, basil morito is uh, fantastic, I think. Talking about rum, I just come back from the rum fest in, Par in uh, near Paris and it was amazing, very interesting. I didn't bought anything because I'm running out of budget now, but I am. Uh, I have noted on my wish list some of them. I'm also planning to do a rum video or two or three <laughs> at some point, but I'm just trying to gather. I don't have a lot of rums, but I have a few interesting ones. I'm uh, potentially gathering uh, some from one brand to do a special one brand review with three or four different uh, um, um, bottles and samples but it's another story for later on lots of talk i'm sorry already uh, that's why i had to divide it into uh into 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 a lot of into two parts minimum um, shall i stop it now most prob i don't know i don't know uh, it's gonna be a long video let's assume we're doing long video even if nobody watch them or not a lot of people uh, we're gonna start with our first one which was also the very first gin I ever tried in my life back to 25 years ago and so this the theme is respected there because of what is written on the back label bottle by William Grant and Sons, Scotland. Yeah, starting by a uh, Scottish gin. William Grant, who does Glenfiddich single malt. Balvenie single malt, the Balvenie, but also, of course, Kininvi, but I don't have any there. They do the monkey shoulder blended malt, but they of course do this uh, blended scotch grants, which I have a lot of uh, bottles to review and I'm super late on it. We'll explain you why in another video, but yeah, I'm planning also to do 
uh, doers and a grants uh, special uh, overview with uh, four or five expressions. Right, for now, Hendrix, it's a very, uh, I didn't have time, I added this on the last minute for some technical reason you don't need to know. Uh, so I didn't have time to do a lot of research on, on the history of the brand, but I understand it's one of the uh, oldest uh, uh, gin uh, on the market. Uh, they say 1886 uh year of establishment this is a small uh, batch handcrafted as they say but it's it's industrial but they say handcrafted i don't know if it's relevant in uh, 2023 um, now the ingredients of this and then we're going to taste it neat and with a few drops of water um, as always glasses i have this glass, this is not a gin glass, this is a, a whiskey glass, nosing glass. Of course, you can use this, also a whiskey glass, but this is, resembles more to a nosing glass for uh, many spirits. A wider one would be uh, maybe recommended, a copita like this, but bigger. And now that said, it's also a question uh, we are tasting here. We're not consuming only one or two drinks. So the amount is uh, less important, the amount of alcohol. So this is different if you uh, taste something. I mean, you only have one drink. You, I'm sure you get my point. Uh, so you also for a better experience, taking more time, maybe a bigger glass uh, is recommended for, for those spirits, white spirits. Um, ingredients wise this is famous because it has an infusion now uh, i found it in uh, dave's dave broom's book that it says it's essence of cucumber and rose petals that are added post distillation which i didn't know i thought it was only infusion of uh, those two special ingredients that are really characteristic from a uh, hendrix taste and also this black bottle and this uh, this uh, special uh, shaped label of course as always when i will present you a gin this is juniper and this is the lead ingredients that has to be felt on the nose and the palate the most preeminent one now some gins also put ahead other flavors other aromas uh, but they have to be just under the juniper to conform to the regulations most often you will see juniper you will of course always you will see juniper berries uh, distilled but you uh but you will see uh coriander seeds this is um common and angelica root these are often the ingredients you will find on top of the juniper then we have cube berries so it's a kind of pepper with kind of acidulous notes orris root chamomile caraway seeds elderflower meadow sweet orange peel and lemon peel so let's see what this does on the nose now this this version is 41.4 i have to tell you that i had the chance to try a version that's for friends La Maison du Whisky, and that's also one that is uh, available in a liter or a big more than a liter, I'm not sure. And that one is much better than this. It's the 44% ABV. I think this is a bit weak, unfortunately. ABV wise, coming on from whisky now, I'm, I'm not uh, against 40%, 41, 42, but I think some uh, spirits need more ABV to shine. So on the nose you have immediately the juniper but immediately also the famous cucumber and rose petals coming in and a lot of citrus fruit of course as in many genes. This is super balanced, super sweet in a way. There's a sweet nose that are not present in some common, some Gordon or London dry gin, some more not very interesting for tasting. Uh, I pick gins to initially to mix them like this one, but uh, more and more over the years, I pick them to drink them neat. So I was more demanding on quality and 
the restitution on the ballot on the on what was promised uh, so beautiful very seductive so floral and um, lots of citrus fruit and lots of classic trademark uh, of uh, London of dry gin it's a dry gin for me maybe it's not uh, I'm mistaken in that if the gin specialists tell me what category this gin is in doesn't seem to be a London dry gin is it a dry gin I don't know uh, I suppose only it only says gin so I so very pleasant nose let's go on the palette very sweet very short unfortunately this one is so light I'm not gonna add water very sweet some might say it is not for the target is not people who want to try it neat this I understand that I might be wrong overall a pleasant one but it's way more interesting at 44 percent there are variants of this one i'm not going to go uh, into details but the uh, there's a lunar one there's an uh, orbium one adding other kinds of botanicals in it i haven't tried them so can't really speak about them have a look on uh, the gin is in uh, that com. It seems to be a very informative uh, website so there we have it this one is placed uh, before the others i don't rate gin but i will probably do at the end of the four episodes a kind of uh, top gins of my collection maybe going by uh, taste them all uh, and backward from one to the other uh, probably a top five gin at the end we'll see this is not going to be in the top five for sure because of the abv but i thought this was interesting just a second now on to the second gin second gin uh, i thought it was an offer uh, and i thought it was very distinctive with, with the promises that are said here uh, i will come back to it flavor wise but for now it doesn't seem to be so distinctive so maybe i've been a bit fooled by this offer and the nice packaging I don't know uh, there's also some uh, recipes there as often and some um, tasting notes as well but the the ingredients are just mentioned there uh, we're gonna come back to this uh, this is made by the Balmenach distillery and for me that was interesting so this is not an official uh, Balmenach. This is one made by Aberfall and Knights uh, Abraco. But it's almost uh, semi-official in the Deerstalker range. I had a nice Breville in there, 40 percenter, but quite nice uh, Highland malt. Uh, so you see, it's a bit confidential in a way. This one, uh, some could argue uh i forgot uh, there's something on the table that shouldn't be there because it's about the second episode uh, okay never mind so this one is small batch gin it's called karun uh as i understand by the pronunciation that it's a small batch scottish gin of course there's juniper in it uh coriander angelica but more original there's some apples there are some uh, heather uh, heather i like a lot heather uh, spir heather uh, based spirits uh, there's a frau which is a scottish beer that i like a lot which is based on heather uh, not only but uh, and uh, there's one from the stratern distillery i couldn't find uh, the whiskey and i couldn't find the gin here so i cannot show you and pick it into the selection too bad but there was one called heather rose if i'm not mistaken which is that tried in scotland uh, and uh, uh, and uh, i liked it uh, uh, a lot uh, so yeah stay tuned to uh, not stay tuned but uh, 
be aware that there the, uh, there are some uh, a lot of craft genes that are not making it to France unfortunately there's also one called Lusa gene in the Isle of Jura which is not related to the distillery but there was a very interesting one as well I tried in Scotland um, I will not speak here about the Tobermory gene I tried two different expressions the regular one which was not very interesting for me and another one which was better if I manage to get me one, uh, I will review it maybe here. Uh, now for this one, the other ingredients uh, interesting is bog myrtle, cassia. Uh, it's difficult to translate in French if there are French viewers, but cassia is also called fausse cannelle de Chine. Uh, bog myrtle is translated by mirica in French. Uh, there's also some lemon of course there's also some uh, orange and there's some rowan berry which is called sorbier in french and uh, dandelion which is called pisoli in french so very hard to uh, translate all this uh, so we'll see how this translates on the uh, the nose it comes across a lot as a London dry gin and unfortunately it may be me but it's not helped by the low ABV I have to say I would have loved to see way more honey in there but there is not so much I don't distinguish it on the nose let's see on the palate cheers or cheers yes because it's not whiskey like for the um, Hendrix but even more here it's super melted struggles to express a lot it's beautiful it's very sweet it's nice and I'm not saying it's not good just saying it lacks of expressivity for me that is why you could see it's a paradox but no because adding a few drops will create a chemical reaction agitation uh, uh, to the spirit and reveal maybe I'll swirl a little bit around reveal maybe some notes that are hidden on the first try let's see yeah I definitely don't feel the apples I struggle to find the other notes there's some green notes Veg vegetal in French that's super discreet that might be the dandelion the rowan berry I'm not sure bog myrtle I don't feel it I'm not sure what it is as well heather unfortunately uh, almost nothing or nothing maybe a hint now but Honestly, super frustrating. It would be one for mixing mainly, unfortunately. I would really would like to see this with more heather and uh, at 46% ABV. That will be my conclusion. This one will definitely not make it to the top five. Right, but never mind. We're discovering, and also maybe you didn't know that so many distilleries are making gin now even I tried the Isle of Rasse gin that was nice but the context was more whiskey so I couldn't really uh, figure out if it was nice also from some French other distilleries were rather cool let's take more water in the glass uh, one of the most impressive gins I tried that are not yet in my collection uh, we're also a Vietnamese gin using uh, Hand of Buddha uh, like for the French gin there's very few gin that I use that well I speak of uh, Hand of Buddha and Asian aromatics good transition this is not Asian this is Irish uh, this is made by the Shed distillery uh, this is also craft gin this one uses oriental botanicals uh, 
partly, of course, not only. And this comes with a beautiful bottle, beautiful cork as well. Oh, I forgot to say, unfortunately, the Cowron, you see, cork is beautiful, but very loose. So be careful uh, for, uh, I was told the gin doesn't behave well uh, in time if you let it for years or stuff, I don't know. Uh, so be careful with the cork, this one is super tight, comes with a leaflet here, which uh, very nicely indicates you some of the ingredients. I don't know if you can focus well, no, not sure. And also shows you, aside from some recipes, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna see that elsewhere. Because I bought this on offer uh, less, yeah, I forgot to speak about price, uh, 25 something about the Hendrix, uh, 39 for the Cowr and Gin. Gin are big, be, begin to be very expensive, or quite expensive, I have to say. Uh, this one was around 34, something like that, or 30. But what was interesting, uh, yeah, let's see the back label as well, maybe. Slow distillation, there's a batch number. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all the story about this because it would be too long. But what was interesting there is I got it with a glass to make... Uh, a GNT, but what was more interesting, the beautiful decoration of the box, gift box, uh, was this with the ingredients written all around. And so this mm, uh, I can see with uh, the box, which is very practical, that says gunpowder tea, and this is the oriental influence. Uh, there's some caraway seed in there, there's some star anise, I love star anise, especially in whiskey, uh, not added but as a natural flavor, Chinese lemon, oris root, coriander seeds, of course juniper, berries, uh, meadow sweet, cardamom, angelica root, oriental grapefruit, coffee or lime. All the ingredients are listed there with a reproduction uh, and a kind of a drawing of the of the botanical, which is quite nice, I think. Oops! What else to say about this? Uh, maybe just read quickly what's in there. Oops! <laughs> I love that. I really love the uh, the packaging. So, the journey of a curious mind, it takes an inquisitive question, uh, questing spirit to produce the most, okay, there's a lot of marketing, blah, blah, but, so through the years, P.G. Rigney has taken many journeys from familiar to terra incognita. Uh, during his travels, I'm summarizing, uh, yeah, so it's from Light Trim County, this gin, by the way. So he, he, he created the Shed Distillery using a medieval copper steel. He began a quest to fuse oriental botanicals within the local Irish one. Uh, so you see a little map here of the journey to Asia, to China. So the gunpowder tea is the main uh, green tea that has been slowly dried, delicate leaves, then carefully rolled into shiny pellets. The flavor is bold and bright with a light spicy freshness. Uh, and there's a recipe there, which is simply a wedge of fresh red grapefruit, four centiliters of uh, this and uh, 140 of, uh, millimeters of chilled premium tonic. And there you have it beautiful packaging but packaging was thing but what is the gin taste likes transparent of course i didn't spoke about a question which is uh chill filtering i have almost no answer about uh, 90 percent of the gins i tried there's only two gins so far which i know 
they are non-chill filtered whether they stated on the label or I talked to the producer and I saw the effect on the glass which guaranteed me uh, the first one was the Cotswolds behind me and the second one is that fantastic French gin which is not filtered at all which is the l'alambic Parisian gin uh, aside from that mm, I'm afraid they're all chill filtered and in some flavored ones it really shines that they are uh, shines shows that they are chill filtered so quite grassy legs but not lasting too long we're talking there of an age spirit so there you, you will see still legs and stuff but you cannot compare the legs of an unaged spirit to an age spirit the only thing that would shine is abv and chill filtration and if it's fat or not beautiful nose a lot of oriental subtleties on lime on, on citrus and oh my god sorry for the noise citrus fruit family are coming across there on the nose so there's quite some originality there let's see on the palette yeah 43 mm. percent 43% sorry comes across quite well here it's a super delicate gin very melted again citrus fruit is and tea is the second rank of flavors but they are competing a lot with uh, juniper to take first place so I guess that's why it's not a London dry gin because I'm not sure the juniper comes first there but it's almost equal it's super delicate beautiful one uh, I'm happy to have this different style of gin you will see with the next ones that we're gonna dive even more into the citrus fruit territory with the two last genes mm. now yeah, I see the pepper now. Mm, beautiful. The different lime and citrus, lemons, and then a kick of uh, of, of the berries there. Um, sorry. Let's get back to this. This is the only one for which I don't have written recipes. Yeah, this. Is there something, yeah, kaffir lime probably, uh, and um, middle sweets and Chinese lemons shine through here, I think. Now, of course, the difficulty here uh, is to be able to uh, distinguish flavors, gr uh, I mean, ingredients that you haven't tried per se so um yeah i have to speak about the whiskey as well even if i don't have it it's one that's not easy to find even if it's every now and then available at la maison du whiskey mm. nice one as often with jeans if there's some of the ingredients mess around with the highly fragrant profile it can turn into a soapiness note there's a hint of it in there not much more but it's quite drinkable and very very pleasant i haven't tried it on gin tonic and on ice yet um, there's a lot of experiments i still have to do this uh, is from the shed distillery i have the chance to try the distillate uh, before the, the single malt was ready they have a, a very special recipe of single malt using not only barley but oat in the recipe i'm sorry it's in black and white but the drum shambo uh, single pot still uh, you have a picture there so you can see quite original bottle as well uh, so i haven't tried any yet which to try some soon all in all one that could compete at least in the top 10 if not the top 5 I think uh, and on my collection yeah for sure 
Next one, we're diving into Asia now, completely with the two last ones. Next one is the Rokujin. Roku means six because of the six uh, local Japanese botanical in there. As you can see, the, 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 the bottle is gorgeous. And wait a minute, forgot something. Yeah, I forgot this, which is in French at the rhythm of the Japanese seasons, it said. There's some uh, recipes and some so the seasons also that are quoted there. Let me. Yeah, so this uses six. Uh, it's in French, I'm sorry. The six. Um, where is it? Here. Uh, yeah, here's the Roku, Japanese craft gin. Uh, made by Suntory for the 3% ABV. This uses six different botan local botanicals on top of eight others to uh, symbolize the seasons of Japan. So there are leaves of sakura and flowers of sakura to represent spring. There are sensha and gyokuro tea to represent summer. There's uh, sensho pepper uh, and yuzu zest. Sensho pepper to represent autumn and yuzu zest to represent the winter. I struggled. I didn't bought th this at once. I bought it very recently because I wanted absolutely, I'm a, you know, I'm a bit fetishist. This summer bag, a limited edition uh, of it, which I found really cute. <laughs> you know how fetishist I can be with packaging and stuff. So uh, there you have it. Uh, I think, yes, you can see. Fantastic. Sakura flower, yuzu peel, sancho pepper, yaku, yeah, sakura leaf. Sakura is uh, cerisier in French. Uh, sencha and uh, tea and gyokuro tea. Beam Centauri, you know that Centauri paired with, uh, merged with uh, Jim Beam, the big American company a while ago. While whiskey again and um, whiskey and uh, and gin because of course you cannot not know that uh, Suntory has two um, single malt distilleries first off the Yamazaki uh, it is an old release of course it's super expensive now uh, 1923 the first Japanese distillery in history producing whiskey other one otherwise it's not the first uh, Hakshu the second one in 1973 uh, with a current release and of course they have a grain distillery which is called the Chita right but they do produce the Rocco gene for this one, they have eight ingredients, traditional ingredients. I couldn't find all the eight one. I apologize. I only could find Jennifer, uh, juniper, sorry, uh, coriander, cinnamon, and uh, orange zest. I guess that's probably uh, angelica, uh, lemon, etc. for the four others. But for the, I told you which were the, um, the Japanese ingredients so I'm not gonna get back to it and instead I'm gonna go here with sorry the rum fest glass <laughs> uh, but I had to find uh, five identically shaped glasses for this so this one comes forgot to say at 43 percent ABV this one has quite a complexity on the nose on the citrus family uh, and also typical Japanese uh, ingredients it shows mm. lovely nose very again you can see clearly it's not a dry gin a London dry gin because juniper doesn't really shine first I mean it does but it's it doesn't comes crisp and clean and, and zesty and, and uh, zingy as in some traditional, I mean, if you take the tank ray and others, you'll see that next time. 
and it, it's lovely it's super complex again a bit like the drum shambo but differently because those uh, botanicals the six particular ones are very local so lots of citrus fruit nuances there there's something a bit citric also that I didn't have on the others let's go on the palette Kampai great balance on the palette I have to say um, it's a sweet gin again somewhere in the same family uh, than of the um, gunpowder gin from the Rum Shambo, uh, the shed. I mean, this was difficult also to to do the lineup, but I'm trained to that with whiskey, so why not? I think I made a good a good lineup as well, progression-wise. I'm an expert in that. I think I can say that without being ashamed of saying that. I've become an expert in progression and evolution in bringing a tasting to the table tasting set to the table so lovely nose let's call the palette oh I did, I, I did it already I'm gonna add some water super balance uh, palette again lots of local um, citrus fruit coming in uh, I mean coming across as again uh, um, a lot of camailleux as we say in painting so nuances of the same family of colors or here same family of uh, families of citrus fruit I in, I've learned that there are 400 different uh, lemons citrus uh, citruses around the world 400 varieties I've been told by an expert on spirits uh, a while ago so here's only six plus probably uh, traditional Western lemon and and so so already with six different you can see how complex it can be and this the word is complex like for the drum shambo those two are probably the most complex and refined of the set so far drum shambo and this but Hendrix is subtle as well but lacks a bit of power oh, lovely beautifully made uh, this one will probably make it on the top 10 right let's go now to the, the bottle is a bit heavy that's so beautifully shaped with all the I uh, forgot to mention the botanicals are there some of, of them the Japanese ones lovely packaging they're really you know like for the uh, Hibiki uh, blended whiskey they really know how to do th their stuff now talking about Japanese we will end today by the Nika coffee gin and coffee again it's not coffee uh, the drink it's coffee I don't know how to pronounce it properly so this NS coffee who invented this uh, coffee continues still uh, it's a bit explained there uh, produced by Nika whiskey distilling and co this one is 47 percent ABV that's why it's on last position of course if you know Nika uh, parent company I mean parent will be Azahi the beer company but uh, I mean the Nika group of distillers you will know that I really love this uh, group uh, as well with their uh, 1934 first distillery of uh, malt distillery here with uh, Yoichi which one of my very favorite single malt whiskey distillery later on came in 1969 the Miyagi Kyo distillery these are the two current releases affordable ones because the, the Yoichi 10 now the new one is shame shame on them the price is insane uh, for 10 years old and also they have the coffee grain whiskey 
Yeah. Now, previously, the coffee green was ma made at another distillery, but uh, Nishinomiya, but it's closed. And now on uh, the, uh, the the Miyagi, the, the grain is made at Miyagi Kyo. I hope the background noise will not get higher. So I'm happy I'm almost at the end. Uh, now to come to the Nika coffee gin, there's four typically Japanese citrus ingredients. I will come to that shortly and 11 other um, ingredients. Typically uh, a classic batch, not always, but most often as I was told, bears 1200 uh, bottles. Uh, you have there, you have of course Geneva, you have Angelica, Coriander, Oranges, also some Apples. You have Lemon and you have Hinami Lemon and then goes the other ingredients which are typically Japanese. So you have Yuzu, you have Kabosu, Amanatsu, you have Sancho Pepper and you have Shekwazar. What the? is that is citrus depressa in latin so i have no idea what it is but uh now for some of those uh, uh, yeah it's made of barley corn uh barley and corn mixed okay that's what i wrote um now i had the chance at the stand of nika a few years ago to smell some of the ingredients uh, they were presented to the audience to uh, when they did launch the gin. So it's probably somewhere uh, 2015, 16, something like that. Not sure. Now, while I loved the gin at the stand uh, at the, the Whiskey Live, I didn't like the first uh, third of my bottle at all. There was a super strong note of lemongrass, which I couldn't handle. I love lemongrass in Asian cuisine. Uh, I don't like it in my uh, spirits when it resembles to dishwashing products, <laughs> something like that. Now, fortunately, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the air, it is now getting way more polite and way more focusing on the citrus fruit so i'm relieved because i was almost saying i will never drink of this bottle i'm glad that it took me some time to review it because otherwise i will dismiss it uh, right away so now it's a, it's a, a bit like the uh rokujin but comes across a bit sharper and more uh, direct on, on the citrus fruit. It's almost lemongrass note is still there, quite strong, but less strong than before. The juniper is almost buried behind all those citrus fruits and uh, lemons, different lemons. Let's see on the palette how it has developed. I tried it only once since uh, a few months. Uh, for the review and otherwise let's go hmm yeah it's much better now there's almost a note which I like of um, um, candied lemon candied lime almost candied lemon and lime note which i found very interesting some sugar glazed and vanilla glazed note almost that, that i found very appealing there's some obviously exotic uh, uh, japanese lemons that i don't know but i smell them so can a bit remember of them uh, 47 percent is enough almost a bit too much more maybe 46 would have been okay but that's why it's the last one because it's more sharp it's the most powerful of, of of them all not necessarily my favorite mind you i can tell you already i'm not sure this one will make it to the top 10 but it's not far because it's way better than at the beginning of the bottle oh and i forgot again apologies 
So it's not on this list. I have to pause it, I'm afraid. Yeah, I, have, I, I will have to pause a second. Bear with me. Right, so uh, I'll finish this and I'll give you a recap of the prices. Let's put some uh, water in there. I will really love to try them all in GNT and in uh, on ice, etc. But it will be crazy, crazy uh, amount of uh, alcohol in that for a comparison. Not very reasonable review, to be honest. And a lot of the results spoiled <laughs> after. Mm. Way, way nicer than I remember and than before. I, I think I enjoy it now. Now, um, if you want to have a, an overview of this, uh, it's gonna be hard. It's so long. It's gonna be a long review, so I'm gonna lose subs, lose viewers again. But it's life. It's my choice. This might change, I will come back to that soon. I uh, have to do a statement for everyone about what I do here on YouTube. Also considering what uh, recently happened. Um, forget about that. So, price is 33, uh, let's say 35 now for the Hendrix. Uh, th uh, almost 40 for the Kowloon. Uh, Drum Shambo, 36, but with a glass and nice box uh roku gin around 30 euros very fair uh except especially if you have the this summer bag that i know ken is raving about that hi ken from scotch down under uh you might find it online uh and co uh, coffee gin was 38 euros it's most ex expensive this set with the cow um so there you have it i'm not i cannot be longer on this uh, you see the different kind of styles they have there uh, i mean we're not in the this episode typically in london dry gin territory we'll be way more in the second one especially with the botanist and tank return and maybe some others uh, not all but uh, yeah i think hope you found that interesting please give me a like i do get very 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 few like compared to the number of views and also leave me a comment do you like gin did you figure out there were so much related to the whiskey distilleries which one of those five if you try them is your favorite or if you know other uh Whiskey Distro is making gin. Please comment below. It's open. See you soon. Bye.